You say the practice of virtue could change the pathway in the brain. What does that mean to you? Uh, by the practice of virtue, I mean the moderation of these instinctual needs that have often become demands or, or compulsions uh, in the course of growing up. So that, for instance, everybody must, uh, or no one can criticize me mm -hmm. uh, because that would show there was something wrong with them. <laughs> so, so that attitude is, is, is an exaggeration. Hopefully not everybody's going to criticize us, but that we have a few naysayers is, is inevitable in this life. Or to come into this life and think of, uh, it's not right that anyone, especially me, should suffer. Well, that's a belief system. And the emotions tend to follow whatever our belief system is. Mm -hmm. And much of the child's belief system comes from the culture or his friends or, or the uh, uh, neuroses that his parents may suffer from or her parents. So to be free of our attachment to find gratification in these excessive uh, exercises of, of, uh, of uh, activity is, is, is the practice of virtue. In other words, you keep reminding yourself of yeah. what you really want to do. That's right. And it's also a way of staying in the presence of God, which uh, in, 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 as you develop the moderating attitudes, then the presence of, uh, of God begins to emerge. And you have whatever graces you've received, and you have the fruits and gifts of the right. Spirit, right. and then the, uh, that grow into the cosmic consciousness or Christ consciousness, union and unity. And all of those are unconscious to us. But the the silence activates those powers just as it evacuates the negative energies.